Welcome, Linton Allen here. This is Sketch and Tell. This is part of my ongoing series called Colours of Life. Last time I was looking at the colour red, and as with most of our primary colours, they can mean almost the opposites when it comes to our feelings and our emotions, our responses to life. Last uh, time I was looking at red as our symbolizing our passion of anger and resentment. But today I want to explore red as romance and love. But before I get onto that, in the painting world, again, red is a very difficult pigment to source, whether you are a painter or a, a textile artist. And for centuries, red was worth more than gold. And only the uh, wealthy, Aristocrats and uh, nobility could afford to wear garments that were dyed red because red came from one source and it was protected and it was fought over by the Portuguese and the French and the English and the Spanish uh, for centuries to who had control of that source of this red dye. And that source was located in South America and it came from a tiny little beetle called a cochineal beetle or bug no bigger than your little fingernail these little guys would live on cactus plants or cacti and they would be farmed in the tens of thousands just covering all of these plants and then they would be gathered up and if you held one in your fingers and squished it you would have this brilliant red beetle juice, this red dye on your fingers. And that's what they would do. They would uh, squish these bugs and create this very expensive carmine red, cochineal red. Today we still use it. It's used as a, as a food dye. Processed ham to bring that colour back, that nice red colour that we really like to see when we're at the shops. That comes from carmine red. If you are, well, I'm not sure if cherry coke is still around, but when Coca-Cola brought out that range of coke, cherry coke, the additive for the cherry part was E120, carmine red, cochineal red. And today, if you are putting lipstick on your uh, lips or even some rouge on your face, if you don't want to have any chemicals in that and you're after organic colouring, guess what you're smearing on your face and your lips? Bug juice. But anyway, beside the point, I want to go back to thinking about red as that search for love and romance. Red is predominant on Valentine's Day and we associate it again with that deep desire for romance and love. So I'm going to paint a picture and just share a few of my thoughts about this.
always uh, a challenge to try and draw beautiful flowers uh, in a vase quickly, but hopefully you will uh, see the symbolism of these roses to love and romance. And I'd like to just put right out the front that I'm not an expert when it comes to uh, giving guidance on searching for love and romance. I just want to share a couple of things out of my own life uh, experience. The first one I want to go again right back to where my journey, my search for romance uh, began. As a very young boy in year six, I can remember clearly that there was a, a girl in our class who just caught my attention and my imagination. For me, she was a standout, special person. And it wasn't just her looks, or the beautiful, long, flowing, blonde hair. It was just everything about her, her smile, her, uh, the way she spoke. But for me, I was just an ordinary nobody. And I just thought, she's never going to notice me until one day I received a note that had been passed from one person to another. And eventually, as I got that folded note and, um, and opened it, and read it, it said, Dear Linton, I would like to sit next to you in the music room this Friday. Cross, 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 Belinda. And I knew deep down that this was a genuine love letter. And I just was on cloud nine because I knew that this was where it all happens. This is where romance uh, is um, on display because in our classroom, our teacher would position us around tables where she wanted us. But one period each week, at the end of the uh, week, in a demountable building, it was the music lesson, and we lined up, and the teacher there was a little bit more relaxed about who sat next to who. And so most couples would kind of make sure they were lined up in pairs outside the room so that when they went in, they could sit next to each other. And that afternoon, Belinda was standing next to me. And all I can remember about that lesson was sitting next to her and holding her hand under the desk. I told you I was, was a great romantic, not really. The week flew by, filled with the normal uh, activities of school life, but I was looking forward to the end of the week again. And as we lined up, guess who were Belinda was standing next to? Derek wasn't me. And Derek was the one in the class that all the girls had eyes for. And to this day, I still haven't quite figured out what went wrong. Was it me? Is it that romance of love only lasts a week? Or was there something deeper at play here? Was, was Belinda playing a pretty, you know, interesting game of getting Derek to maybe be jealous or envious and then ask, getting him to ask her, who knows? But I do know that years later, as an adult, I was in a hospital just, uh, just going through a, a minor operation and I went for a bit of a walk down the hallway and I looked through into one of the wards. There was a glass panel on the door and I saw unmistakably Belinda, grown up as an adult. She was a nurse attending to the patients there. Her long flowing blonde hair, still uh, a striking feature. I didn't say anything. I didn't go in because that memory came back to me of embarrassment, and shame and feeling worthless and rejected. And I put that out because I, I want to say that the search for love and romance for all of us is a journey. It takes us to incredible highs. It can also take us to deep lows. We write songs about it. We write poetry about it. We create films about this love. Love found and love lost. But this is my second thought that I want to put out, and that is that as I get older, I start to sense that this journey that we are all on, this search for romance and love is actually a search for being valued and accepted and love for who we really are. No pretense, no restrictions, no facades, no need to perform, but just to be 
loved with that kind of love that lasts and won't let us down. And the amazing thing is, in this journey, we start to sense that there is someone actually seeking us, searching for us, and reaching out for us. Now, there are some ancient Christian symbols, which I'm going to put up here one by one, that kind of map this journey. And the first one is this. The inverted Y. Sorry, this one here is the first one. That one up there, which represents or symbolizes upstretched arms. Again, indicating our search for a connection, our search for love, the kind of love that I was talking about, the unconditional acceptance. This inverted Y represents the one who came to show us that there is someone who is, from our first breath, reaching out to us. Red represents also that sacrificial red, that blood red. And that symbolizes, for those of faith, the person of Jesus who came to embody, to flesh out that journey of God towards us, to not only express God's love and his interactions as Jesus moved amongst his, uh, the people that he was with, not just in his teachings and his word, but in his willingness to lay down his life for each one of us. That love in and through Jesus is God's love. And it is a real love. It is on display for us to see and to connect with. It is unconditional. It holds nothing against us and it, hold, and it holds nothing back from us. But with any kind of offer of love, any kind of invitation of love, there needs to be a response for it to be completed. And so we come on to, if I can get this one right, that connection is when we are willing from the heart to say yes. And no matter what our experience has been in other relationships, this one we can trust it. And we can take that step, yes, a vulnerable step. But in nonetheless, it's a willingness to respond where there's an instant sense of being connected to the source of this true love. And then the journey continues and we uh, bring these two together. And that love is an ongoing love where we sense that we can become united with God. In fact, we can be transformed from the inside out and to uh, find not only what we've been looking for, but to actually find that joy and that peace and that love that is going to not just last through this lifetime, but go on to eternity. That's a journey worth going on. Thank you for listening. Have a colourful day.